Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timotheus, Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, save people, which are at Philippi, that's the city, with the bishops and the deacons. So this letter, this epistle, is written to the saints and it's written to the bishops and the deacons of the churches themselves at Philippi. Uh, Acts 6 1 through 6. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Salutation. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. So Paul remembers them. Paul lifts up praise. Paul prays for them. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now. So Paul has kept the Philippians in prayer constantly. He's pleased and joyful over these people. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And the thing is, every day we're saved until the Lord calls us home. God is trying to perfect us into perfectness. God is molding us. God is shaping us. And whether we're on the mountain or down deep in the valley, everything that happens in our life is for God to use us to help us to grow. And we're supposed to grow. We're not supposed to be carnal. We're not supposed to be babes. We are to grow as Christians, and when that day of Christ comes, and when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and our sins are burnt away as ashes, and our, if any rewards are rewarded to those Christians that have done bright, are placed upon our heads, at that moment, when the judgment seat of Christ is over, we will be perfect, 100%. God right now is trying to make us to that point. He does not want us to have any losses at the judgment seat of Christ, even though we are sinners. He's given us 1 John 1, 9, that we may confess our sins, that he's able and, and uh, for, forgiving to forgive all of our sins. So God wants us as our father, as his children. He wants the best for us. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my bonds, he's in jail, jail ministry uh, epistle, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. So Paul has a heart, he has a true bond of love for these people. He already said that these, these people of Philippi, the the saints, the bishops, and the deacons, the entire church group. He's thinking of them. He's praying for them. He wants them. And the theme of this epistle is joy. For God is my record. That's an oath. That's something you can take in a courtroom. Say, hey, who bears record? Who is the testimony of what you're going to say? God. How greatly I long after you all, notice how he keeps saying all, in the bowels of Jesus Christ, Matthew 9, 36. There's something special about the Philippians. 
There's a special report of Paul. There's a special salutation of Paul to the Corinthians. It's joy. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. So we are to seek the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of the world. And we are to grow in love. We are all judgment. So what do you do? Judge not, least ye be judged. And Paul turns around and says, judgment. We are to judge that which is right, that which is wrong. We are to have the knowledge of love. And we're also to know good from evil. That's the knowledge. Is this wrong? How, how, why do I say it's wrong? What's the Bible say? Well, this is right and proper. Well, how do I say it's right and proper? The Bible says so. Somebody will come up to you, judge not, least you be judged. What gives you the idea to judge them people? The Bible does. You have a love of God by in his word. That ye may approve things. All right, so in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent. You've got to judge. There are people who are so foolish out there, judge not. And, you know, they don't look both ways when they cross the road. Well, that's not a good thing. We are to take the measure, the ruler called the Bible, and we are to find out that which is excellent, that which is approved of God, that what God hates and what God loves. And we are to adhere to what God wants and not what God does not like. Too many Christians do what God does not want. And the very first thing on their list is they do not read the Bible. Do They do not study the Bible. And that's a failure. So there is a judgment between good and evil. That ye may be sincere and without offense. Till the day of Christ. So not only at the judgment seat of Christ, you're not to be offensive. Or have any offenses. But what about your life living as a Christian right now? You ought not to have any sin in your life. You ought not to be living in sin. You got First John 1 night. You got the power, all the powers we read about in the scriptures so far, up to the book of Philippians. We can do it. But we don't put this flesh away. We don't, we adhere, we all got our favorite sins. And that's wrong. Until the day of Christ. Get it clean now before we don't know when Jesus Christ. He may come right now and this video will just keep on recording and recording and recording. If Christ were to come right now, if, if your body would have a heart attack and die right now, if you were to die right now, any sins you have that have not been under the blood of Jesus Christ will stand at the judgment seat of Christ, the day of Christ. That's the judgment seat of Christ. This is not the second advent. This is the rapture and Christ judging us at the judgment seat of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Now run that back over to Galatians. Those fruits of the Spirit. Oh, no, fruit of the Spirit. What are those fruit? They're righteousness. They're holy. They're of the comforter, of the Father, given by Jesus Christ. He said, I'll give you a comforter once I go. Which are by Jesus Christ. So the fruit of the Spirit is also the fruit of Jesus Christ. The Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. And love, joy, peace, long-suffering are all righteousness. My righteousness is not my righteousness in the eyes of God. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's why, I, listen, I can, you cannot lo know love unless you know God because God is love. And people will quote that verse, God is love. You don't realize what you're saying. There is no love, there is no joy, there is no peace, there is no long-suffering without knowing God and getting his attributes. Because we are under Satan, our father, before you're saved. And Satan's a liar, and he's a murderer. And he's a user and a deceiver. That's our character as a sin nature. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. And those fruit, that fruit that makes you right and do right is because of Jesus Christ, not you. When you sin against God, there you are. 
He said, when do I show up in Christianity? When you sin. Well, what about when I do right, Jesus Christ? You guys, we're going to be rewarded with crowns if we do right because the righteousness of Jesus and not of our own merit. Unto the glory and praise of God. So we are to do right for God to get the glory, for God to be glorious, for God to be praised, for God to praise us. I mean, if you got a child that's disobedient, do you, you know, uplift that child to, to your friends and co-workers and, and family? No, he's a disgrace. Yet, yeah, but if a child, you know, if he makes the team, if he gets the trophy, if he wins the, hey, hey, isn't that great? My child, look what he's done. They got bumper stickers. My child is an honor student of this school. Well, you never have see a bumper sticker saying my child is the most lazy criminal my child just got three extra years in prison you don't see those bumper stickers and yet God the same way as a father he wants to write from us he wants us to do right and the only way he can praise us and help us and bless us if we do right but I would you should understand brethren Dr. Sapien, understand that the things which happened unto me, all right, so now they're concerned about what happened to Paul. Stuff has happened to Paul. All kinds of things are happening to Paul. Have fallen out. Uh, look at my notes. Prison, the beatings. Rather, unto the furtherance of the gospel, chapter 4, verse 22. These things have happened because of the gospel. And you know what happened in the book of Acts when the church was persecuted? It grew. It, it got mighty. People were coming. You know why there's no revival in America? Because there's no beating. There's no persecution in America. There are people getting saved in Muslim nations today when, from a conduct of a Christian getting uh, slandered, getting killed, or getting tortured, whatever it is. That draws people to Jesus Christ. Under the Constitution of America and the freedom that we have does not draw people. And Paul, as a result from him going to prison, people are getting saved. He's got a jailhouse ministry and God's taking care of him. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace. So Paul is able to witness in high and holy places and he has stood before rulers of nations in the book of Acts to give his testimony of salvation that they heard they had one man say you almost persuaded me to be a Christian and Paul said outside these bonds I like to have all these people here except for being in jail I like to have all you people like me what saved and loving the Lord doing right except for this chain that I wear so Paul through prison has given a great ministry that whereas he would never have. And in other places. So he's gone all around. Book of Acts. And many of the brethren in the Lord. Waxing confidence by my bonds. So there are people Christians that because Paul has done what he has done. They look at Paul and say hey I'm not giving up. Why not? Because Paul hasn't given up. Paul has been a comfort to him. Hey, it must be worth it. Look what Paul's doing. Are much more bold to speak. The word without fear. Well, we read over here in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. He says, And for me, the uttermost may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in bonds, that therein I might speak boldly, well, because he's in jail, because he's still living for Christ, because he has not given up. There are men and women who are preaching boldly because of Paul's suffering. And he's telling the Philippians, hey, be strong. Others are strong. Don't worry about me. God's taking care. This is where God wants me. He's taking care of me. I'm okay. All right, now we're going to get in some trouble. Some, not all, indeed, because we already saw all. 
Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. There are people in pulpits today because envy and strife, Paul said. What's the counter? And some also of goodwill. There are many good preachers in a pulpit. And there are many envy and strifeful preachers in pulpits. I've seen all three. Some in there because envy. Well, that was that's what they delivered Jesus Christ over. They didn't get the, the thrill. They didn't get the people. They didn't get the followers. There are people in the ministry because somebody else is doing better. The strife, arguing, battling. I knew one pastor. That's all he did was battle. He would boast, and uh, uh, that's it. And some also goodwill. There are goodwill preachers out there. The one preach Christ of contention. That's not good. Because like he says, not sincerely. Supposing to add affliction to my bond. There are men that are preaching to make Paul suffer more. So don't cry, baby, to me about your ministry because Paul had all kinds of... He had churches turn against him. He had his own people go against him. And there are people preaching against Paul so he can suffer more. And you had a few people leave your church and you're going to cry, baby. Oh, well. Worst thing they can do is start another church and get the word out even more. They wanted to add affliction to his body. How's that? Acts 15 verses 5 and 6. But the love, but the others of love. So there are people out there who love Paul. They're preaching. They're doing what they're supposed to. There are some who change the message because Paul was persecuted. For the motive, for they don't have to suffer. Paul's in jail because of the gospel. Whoa, I ain't preaching that gospel. Uh-uh. I'll preach love, fairy tales, stories, and lies, and make everyone happy, laugh, and have a good old time. But I ain't preaching what, what Paul preached, because I ain't going to jail. That's what it says. But the other of love, there are people who get up, stand, and preach the gospel, and preach what the Bible says. No matter what happens, no matter who leaves, no matter what happens to their life, they're going to preach and do right. Knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Galatians 6.12 Paul's only crime is the gospel. And there are people who are boldly speaking. There are people who are covetously speaking. There are people who are cowardly speaking. And there are people speaking just to get him in more trouble. Does that sound like a great ministry? And what, what do we have? What do we learn from that? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Even if it's among Christians. I've had more problems with Christians than I've had with worldly people. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth. Whether they preach in pretense or in the truth, Christ is preached. So, if I see the fish symbol on a car, that's a lot better than that fish symbol having Darwinism in, in four feet. Christ is being preached. If somebody is knocking on doors or preaching in the street or getting gospel, they are doing what they're doing by what God has called them to do. And it's funny because he says here, whether pretense or, or true, Christ is pre. Can you imagine a lost man preaching to Christ and then in his own time dying, going to hell, and possibly having people being converted to Christianity? Wouldn't that be a, a kick in a bucket? But Paul's like, hey, I don't care what they're doing. As long as the name of Jesus Christ is being praised. That's all I care about. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice that Christ is lifted up. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now listen, Paul is not going to rejoice because Jehovah Witnesses come to your door and mention Jesus. Because it was scripture with scripture when we run to 1 Corinthians, 
Paul's told us there's another gospel. There's another Jesus. There's another spirit. He's not rejoicing if, if another is being preached. But that Jesus Christ, the Savior, the gospel is being preached. What, what your attitude is preaching it. If it's the right Jesus, the right gospel, the right spirit. I don't care if you're doing it for money. I don't care if you're doing it for fame. If it is Jesus Christ and people will be saved. Okay, let it be. But he's not going to stand up and rejoice because a Roman Catholic will get up and say, okay, here, eat this cookie for Jesus. No, that's another Jesus. Don't get this mixed up with false doctrine. There are three kinds of people who are preaching the gospel. It's the same gospel, but the conduct of them preaching is not right or it is right. And he's trusting the Philippians. He's saying they are in active preaching. So what is going on right now, what we're reading here, people are preaching of envy. They're preaching of strife, of goodwill. He must be answering the report he's got about Philippi. This must be going on in the, in the city that they're in. Because he says, uh, through your prayer. And they're probably praying for the people in the area that are doing all this. And Paul's like, hey, don't worry about it. Just do what you're supposed to do. God will judge it all. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, last chapter we read Ephesians, all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by my life, or by death. All right, get back to me in jail. I'm doing what God has given me the ability to do while I'm here in jail. I'm witnessing to the soldiers. I'm witnessing to other fellow prisoners. Fel I mean, he mentions through his writing, there are fellow prisoners. People in jail are getting saved because Paul was there. We read in Acts 16, a Philippian jailer, Philippia. This is, the, this is the same place that that jailer, remember they're singing praises at midnight. The earthquake came, the guy goes and says, what must I do to be saved? This is the same jail of Acts 16, 30 and 31. Paul's like, hey, I have been before councils. I've been before kings. I've been before prayer. God's taking care of me, guys. I am getting the gospel out far more important people in jail than I could if I was free. Just keep praying for me. Keep praying for the open door. And as far as Ephesians, pray for me to be bold for the places I go. But hey, I'm having a blessed time. Me and the Lord, you know what we're doing at midnight in Philippi, guys? Remember what I was doing? Remember what I told you? We were singing praises to the Lord. And one of your people that are in your church is that Philippian jailer with his family. Don't forget that when you read Philippi. That's where Paul was in jail. And I am, so maybe, you know, maybe that guy and his family are worried about him in jail. They took him out of jail, washed his stripes. Uh, for to me, to live is Christ. Is that your goal? Are you living for Christ or are you living to watch the next Super Bowl? Are you living for Christ or are you wanting a, a, a raise at the job? Are you seeking a, 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 a thing? Something other than Jesus. To me, to live is Christ. Galatians 2.20 And to die is gain. Oh, look at that. Gain. Listen, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord when we die. But if I live in the flesh, if I'm still alive, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. I don't know. I have no idea. For I am in a strait betwixt two. He's like in a little narrow, narrow corridor. Having the desire to depart. I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go to glory. 
I wish God would take me home. That's what he's saying. You ever felt like that? Don't you let anybody tell you you're wrong. For, oh, you ought not be thinking about going home. You ought not think about dying. Paul did. After Paul just said, I'm having a glorious time in prison. God's blessing me. I want to go home. Desire to part and to be with Christ. Got it? How do you be with Christ? You don't take an elevator up and an elevator down, an elevator up and an escalator up and down. You don't do that. In order to be with Christ, you got to die. Paul says, I want to go home. Which is far better. Now, which would be far better for a Christian? Stay on this planet or be with God? So you know what Paul told you about his soul? It goes to God when he dies. The body will go in a grave. They just said recently... That they found Paul's sepulcher. Whether they did or didn't, I don't care. God knows where his body is. But if he were to die and his body be buried in the ground, how would he be with Christ? His soul. Which is far better. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh, living, is more needful for you. You know why God hasn't taken me home yet? Because he has purpose for me. And we ought to, every time we even get out of bed before we get the alarm clock, we ought to say, Lord, thank you for having me. Good night's rest. Thank you, Lord. I, my, I'm awake. And for some reason today, you got me living today. What do you want me to do? Because if God was all done with you, you would not be getting up in the morning. You will be in glory because that would be far better. And the fact is, when we wake up, from our bed, and we get out of bed, there's something God wants us more that he has not taken us home yet. Because Psalm says God's pleasure is the death of his saints. God would be more pleased if we were with him, but what did Paul say? Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Somebody needs you here is why God's kept you here. And Jesus prayed to the Father when he had when he had his prayer. Father, take them not out of this, earth, out of this world, but Leave them in the world. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. There's a reason why we're still living. And that living is not for Super Bowls, not for money, but for preaching the gospel to the lost and raising Christians up from infancy to age Christians. Having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. Paul says, listen, I'm here. I'm going to help you guys out as much as I can. Paul's pretty much saying to the Philippian church, say, just ask me. I got a blank check. Whatever you want, I'm going to help you. If I'm going to be on this planet Earth and you need help, well, that's why I'm here. I'd rather be in heaven. But if I could be a use to the church and to Christians, and okay, I'll help you. And that's what we got to say. God, if I'm here today, there's a reason why you want me here today. Lord God, help me to do today what you want me to do today. I have no idea what it is. I don't know who, what, where, why, or how, or why I'm living today. But Lord, to you be the glory, to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ, not Paul. Paul will help you out, will take care of you, will meet your needs, but you better give glory to Jesus Christ. He tells the Corinthian church, oh, some say I'm Silas, some of Paul, some of this, and churches today, oh, they're wonderful, great preachers. Oh, he says, pooey on you. Give the Lord Jesus Christ the credit, no matter who you minister or who ministers to you. Let Jesus Christ get the credit. For by for me, by my coming to you again. So he's purposed to come back to Philippi. He wants to go there. He wants to go to the church of Corinth too. Only let your conversation, again, that's not talking, that's your conduct of your life. Be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Live according to the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel? Christ died. Bury that flesh. Why? Because Christ was buried. Resurrect the new man in you. Why? Because Jesus Christ was resurrected. 
the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I don't know, Lord willing, I want to be there, but guess what? I may not be there, Lord willing. I may hear of your affairs. I want to hear from you guys. Write me. That you stand fast in one spirit. Now, what did he say to the Corinthians? There's another spirit. So get in that one spirit. Get in the right spirit. And hey, if those men are saved and whatever reason they're preaching, if they're preaching Jesus Christ, hey, be God, be the glory. So he's not talking about false religions lifting up Christ. He's lifting up people who are saved and whatever they're preaching. With one mind. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. The gospel. 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 What is he teaching in verse 27? Teamwork. What the Philippian church? What do they got to do? There's got to be some people praying. There's got to be some people going to doors. Some people preaching on the street. Some people witnessing at work. Some people preaching in the pulpit. Some people teaching from the pulpit. It's everybody doing what they can to the best of their ability. For what? For the gospel's sake. That's what it's all about. Imagine, like I said, we just had the Super Bowl. I wonder how many churches brought in a television set to watch the Super Bowl. That's not what the Bible's about. It's about Jesus. And in nothing, terrified by your adversaries, 1 Peter 5, 7, they provoke others. There are people who are adversaries in Philippi. And you're going to have adversaries where no matter where you go, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And they're terrified. But don't be terrified. No, it's supposed to happen. Which is to them an evident token of perdition. Listen, you know what? Jesus in the scriptures have already told you. You're going to suffer. Let them do it. God will judge them. And God will judge you faithfully. But to you of salvation and that of God. All right, they do it for prediction. That's opposing salvation. You guys are doing salvation. All right, weigh it out. Who's going to get the ultimate blessing from God, guys? And the Philippians already know, us. And that of God. So people will be saved. And God will be pleased. As far as the perdition, you know what will happen. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him. See, you got to believe on him. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's end this chapter. But also to suffer for his sake. First Peter, suffrage. I'm going to close. I know Paul didn't write chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. But chapter 1 closes with the, with, the, with the fact is, people of Philippi, I'm in jail. You guys are going to suffer too. Just If you want to do right, you're going to suffer. That's just a plain, simple fact. You're going to have people against you. i got people against me. They're preaching against me. They're preaching of envy against me. They're, they're cowardly preaching, but I don't care. As long as Christ is lifted up. You guys are going to suffer. Suffer to the glory of the gospel, to salvation, and for God. Having the same conflict which ye saw in me. So there are people being put in jail. And now here to be in me. The Philippians are being jailed just like Paul. And I wonder if that Philippian jailer ended up in jail. You ever wonder that? Because wouldn't you think that Philippian jailer, wouldn't you think somehow if these Philippians are ending up in jail and that Philippian guy is still in charge of that jail, wouldn't you be like, you know, just talk to whatever his name is. He'll help you out. He makes no mention of that Philippian jailer. He probably lost his job. And he may be in jail too. But you're going to suffer. Do it for the Lord.
And guess what? When the Lord comes, the day of the Lord comes, we'll be judged. And after the judgment seat of Christ, we'll be made perfect. Everything will be okay. This world is only temporal. 70, 80, maybe 100. I think it was the longest first I ever heard lived 105 years. That's a short time. But think about the riches and the glory of God in glory when you do right. 